So, Dark, and only food photography. This is the subject I feel the, the most comfortable, uh, to be honest. And I'm happy to share my knowledge with you uh, right now. So, let's start. So, in general, you can divide food photography styles into bright and airy and uh, dark and moody. Bright and airy photos are usually showing soft lightning and well welded subjects. And also the props and backgrounds usually is also bright. And this style is most common in uh, food photography because I think it shows all the elements uh, of the food. Uh, however, as I said, I feel more comfortable with dark and moody food photography. And this style has become very popular over the last few years. This technique, in my opinion, adds a character into the, the contra and contrast into the, into the photos. And I really like this style because it recalls the emotions and shows the textures. I just look at the photos I've attached here and you can see that this is dark and bright, the same subject as a cherry pie here. And both of them are beautiful. Of course, this is mine photos. <laughs> Sorry. And <laughs> but um, dark one for me, like you can you can show the contrast because usually I'm going to I'm going to speak about that later on. The food should be bright and everything around should be should be dark so you can pop the colors and you can pop the contrast and saturation on the on the food which is the hero of our uh, photo right so dark and moody photography requires a little bit more control they say uh, however as i said for me it's easier i don't know why uh, from the beginning i've started uh, the dark and food photography I mean, that was the first subject I've learned. And then I become feeling more comfortable with light food photography. However, I realized that clients, uh, they prefer bright and airy style. So it's important for us uh, to know other styles and uh, we should learn everything. Uh, we shouldn't be focused only on one subject uh, where we feel the most comfortable, but we should be open for more styles. So I will do my best to show you the dark food photography is not that hard as you think. <laughs> so let's start from the, a little bit of history. And no one likes history, but it's going to be just a few slides. Uh, so dark and moody, moody style uh, was very popular uh, in art world. And as I attached here to artists Vermeer and Rembrandt they were creating their their paintings in this kind of style but the most common uh, artist is Caravaggio and uh, this style is called chiaroscuro this photography it's on the next slide it only sounds complicated but is not it means light and dark and this style um, refers to the contrast and the uh, light between the shadows and lights on the photo. And the Caravaggio himself, his style was moody and was dramatic. And I'm pretty sure you, you heard about it because all over the Instagram, there was so many challenges about that and uh, to shoot with uh, chiaroscuro style. So I hope you saw it. If not, Google it, read about him, because it's really interesting. His story is really interesting. So, however, dark style doesn't fit every single food, every single composition you want to create, because not everything looks good in dark and moody feeling. So we need to know what suits better for what, and we need to learn this. This is not like automatically... Sometimes I, I create a scene, I'm stubborn with dark and moody, and I'm create with dark and moody, and I look at the photo and I said, mm -mm, no, not this time. No, I need to find something brighter and it's going to look better with brighter props and brighter background. Uh, so we need to learn it. Don't be um, hard for yourself and just try 
practice and experiment. So props and accessories. This is the most important, uh, one of the most important uh, thing we should have and we focus on. So the selection of props, uh, plates, napkins, bowls, the, the backgrounds, the cutleries, they should be dark, they should be muted and matte ideally. Why? Because as I said, with the cher uh, cherry pie, it really uh, pop up the color when everything around is not bright, is dark. So as you can see here with this noodle soup, the, everything around is muted, is, is pretty dark. It's not black. Dark doesn't mean black, it's just dark. So the food pop up with all the dark and muted props around them. And the same with this pomegranate fruit. It looks really nice when you highlight in post-production. If you highlight the, the hero and everything around, you're going to leave dark and moody. So what we should use, as I said, we should use dark and muted props. And the background also should be dark. But like I said, doesn't mean black. black. And yes, uh, the bright props, they just want to work with the dark and moody composition. The idea, idea of the dark and moody composition is to keep everything dark and moody, <laughs> obviously. So you can see here, this is just part, some of the plates I have and bowls. I'm collecting them. Uh, lately, I buy more plates and bowls than clothes. <laughs> and the same with glasses and cutleries. You can see that most of them are not shiny. They are matte because the shiny props are reflecting the light. That's why it's better to have matte. It's better to have less, but good quality. I can tell you this now, after two years, that a lot of plates I bought, I, I'm not using them anymore because I was so stubborn to have, oh, I want this, I want that. But I'm not using them anymore because they are bright, they are shiny, they're glossy. And now I just invest in better quality props and it's better to have two, three, four plates instead of 20, but better. I agree. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but we need to, we have to learn this and, you know, lesson learned. Right now, all my shiny props, they are on a side and I'm just buying the new one. Matte options. So when you're searching for props, it's really nice to invest in also the vintage props. They don't reflect the light. On the next slide, matte plates, well, as I said, they, they're not reflective, which is the really important in not only dark food photography, in general, in food photography. And neutral tones. And so you, you can use some tricks to get rid of reflection. Doesn't work with plates best, but worked with cutlery. And Vaseline, which I have right here, I can show you. Pretty simple, oh, just Vaseline. You can use it on um, cutlery. And then the cutlery become matte and will lose reflective, which is really good. Speaking about the places where you can buy, you can buy on Etsy, on flea markets, charity shops. Uh, however, is a lot of food pro props stores right now online. You can buy them and they are all over on Instagram. You can check my photos because I don't want to promote anyone right now. <laughs> but um, I have from, from many, many photo for, for many places also. And they are everywhere. They are in the US. They are here in London. I'm pretty sure they are in every single country. You, wherever you live, you can find them. You can buy online and, and go for it. Invest and buy some unique and interesting interesting props because they are really in, in important in food photography uh, here in the middle you can see the photo i used the very old tin and imagine that my friend she she wanted to bin it and she told me oh i don't want this anymore because this is so old and it's you know like sticky oily and she doesn't like it. i said perfect i wanna i want this i want this tin i love this tin and it works for me not only as a prop, but also as a background. You can see this on the next slide when I'm going to speak about background right now. That um, old tin 
can work perfectly as a background. Thank you. So on the left hand side, you can see this ice cream, the pop popsicles actually uh, laying on the ice and on this tin. So as you can see, this tin works perfectly as a background. Also, as I said before, dark food photography doesn't mean black. So you can see that background can be green, can be moody, can be gray. Of course, black, brown, a wood is perfect, perfect for backgrounds as well. And on the right hand side, you can see I used over there, believe me or not, is just a piece of wallpaper. And wherever you live, I don't know how it works in your country, but in the UK, you can go to the hardware store and you can ask for a sample and they're gonna give you like a one meter of the wallpaper. And this is ideally because it's like one meter 70 uh, centimeters and it's perfect for, for a background. So I have some where, and I'm using them also, not for splash or any liquid on it, of course, because I'm gonna damage but when the, the composition looks like here, it's perfect and it's for free. <laughs> so uh, also feel free to use backgrounds with a texture because you can enhance the food appearance. Here, the background painted by myself. So you also can do this it's really easy. You don't have to be artist to make it. And it's a lot of tutorials how to do that. I'm not gonna focus on it because this is not our subject, but I'm pretty sure every single person can make it. It's really easy. And also the vinyl, vinyl backdrops, and it's a lot of vinyl backdrop brands, and they have really good deals. A lot of them have like a bundle, bundles you can buy three for two, or they have some discounts, 20% off today. Just follow them. Whatever I use vinyl backdrops, I tag my the companies I bought from so you can check and look for really good deals. Speaking about food styling, uh, which is really important, with dark and moody food photography, very important is to avoid making the food look artificial. What I use sometimes is like artificial ice cubes. Mm, I have them somewhere here. Sorry, I, I don't know where, where did I, I wanted to show you, but I don't know where I have, uh, where I have them at the moment, sorry. Uh, but don't use fake food. I'm saying that because some time ago, someone sent me a photo, what do I think about the composition? And first thing, what I saw that was a fake tomatoes around, they were plastic. And don't do that. Don't do that, really. It's better to do not use fake fruits or veggies than use fake plastic. It's really, they, they, you can see they are artificial. And what we want to do about food photography, you want the viewer have a feeling that he would like to grab a piece of cake from your photo, take a sip of your cocktail or join the, the table and eat together. So when you're gonna use a plastic food, it doesn't look inviting, I think. So go for natural food. But funny thing, the photo in the middle this is actually, this is a trick. And I mean, real food doesn't mean that cannot be cheated. This is just the water with the soy sauce. And I just, the, I was putting soy sauce, soy sauce, more, more, more. And this is the color I, I get. So with liquids, it's really easy to play with colors, uh, with uh, food coloring as well. But try to use natural, natural food. Um, and uh, another thing is the difference between uh, the advertising food photography and editorial food photography. The first one is meant to look perfect. Look at the, all the commercial burgers, commercial salads or sandwiches. Everything is perfect and tip top. There is no mistakes. The burger is huge. The sandwich is, is really full. And in editorial food photography, which I mean like cookbooks, magazines, our Instagrams, doesn't have to be super perfect. This is very often perfectly imperfect, but we need to know where is the, the, the line. We should know how to control this chaos because like the few crumbs scattered across the table or the cutlery 
a put put an into the piece of cake or person you can see let's say hands and someone you can see that someone is literally eating it looks inviting and tempting so this is experimenting but you should know where is this line and sorry to interrupt i see that someone said artificial ice cubes don't look good either in my opinion yes and no inside of the glass sometimes when you're gonna put between the fruits uh looks okay and what i do sometimes when they are somewhere around the the glass in post-production i just remove the contrast or i made them a little bit more visible i mean um, more not visible more uh, clear i just remove the clarity and they look a little bit better a little bit better so on this image on the next slide you can see that i scattered those small pieces of meringues around the plates i put some fruits around and i also put one of the of the dessert in a corner without a plate so this looks inviting but in reality dessert scene probably would not look like this but for the food food and photography this kind of small little touches are giving honestly and tempting viewing and uh, storytelling behind also when you create a scene planning the styling is really good to put all the ingredients or some of the ingredients you're gonna use inside the recipe on the next slide you can see i'm creating the the cake and everything what i'm gonna use for filling is around so like cocoa powder the the flour some jam cherries and they're gonna go inside so it's like the process photo on the right hand side it's simple it's it's, it's not that complicated capture uh, i mean about the styling and you can see the whipped cream on in the back and some raspberries and it gives like the storytelling and you can pop up the the hero as well doing this with your photos speaking about equipment and settings to be honest i think this is like must have king without tripod is not easy it's not easy because if you work with light natural light let's say you need to increase the iso when you increase the iso you're gonna lose the clarity and this is not what you want right we want the cl clear beautiful sharp photo so when you're gonna set the tripod with your camera it's easier to also to see what you're doing right you see your scene you see what is right when you're gonna take a picture you can see that maybe you would like to increase the highlights or shadows or maybe fork should be here when you have the camera in your hands it's pretty impossible to do that because you can't grab probably the same time twice camera uh, so speaking about the lenses i don't know why there is a highlighted thing uh, anyway my favorite lens is a macro lens i work with nikon and this is sigma uh, and the other lens i have is is tamron i don't have nikors so as i said macro lens uh, what why i love macro lens because it's perfect for details of course uh, whenever i shoot action shots this is lifesaver sharp is really it can provide you beautiful bouquet effect and really nice close ups of course but for a big scene it's really hard to use it so my second lens what i have is 24 70mm camera and i'm using usually yeah for bigger scenes and for usually i use very often i use 50mm on this uh, 24 770 uh so classic nifty 50 right now i invested money in like equipment other than camera but next purchase i'm going to buy is it's going to be 50 mm also sigma and i want to buy the sigma art which is really highly recommended recommended it's not cheap but this lens i have over 3 years i think and it's perfectly working and the same the other one uh, the other one i have maybe like 2 years so this is also important this is not cheap 
it's not cheap in general food photography photography itself is not cheap but it's if you love it you should invest it and slowly don't sacrifice yourself to buy that you want everything right now i was working on a really crappy computer for like a The two years, two weeks ago, I bought new, finally perfect computer. And I was waiting two years to save some money and buy good quality and strong computer because for food photography, you really need big screen, good quality computer and needs to be strong. Uh, speaking about light, which is the next thing, is absolutely the most important factor for me. I mean, not for me, for everyone. Without the light, you cannot actually shoot at all. We can shoot with natural light. We can shoot with artificial light. It's up to you what you're going to prefer. When you shoot with natural light, which I shoot very rarely, to be honest, you should move a little bit farther from the light uh, source. Not so far, of course, because you still need a light on your foot. But just a little bit, not like straight to the window. Yeah, like, I don't know, half meter from one meter from depends how big window you have of course and uh, this charcuroso uh, effect I, i speak about in the beginning looks amazing on, on the backlight because the backlight itself create very nice moody tones and increasing the texture on the food i love i just love backlight however as i said i work with artificial light and what is important with artificial light to learn to work with as well because the food you you capture still needs to look natural so the light should look natural so if you want to work with artificial light you should know where to set the lightning and how to set it this took me time as well to learn especially when i moved from this cheap What I said in the beginning, I bought very cheap uh, equipment from Amazon for like 30 pounds. Works perfectly for me for like a year and a half. So it was not that bad. Uh, however, when I bought Godox SL60, you can see over there, it's like life changer for me. Absolutely amazing working with this light. And you can make it brighter, you can make it darker, you can have hard light, you can use diffuser, so then the light will work as the same as the window. So 95% or even more of my photography are with artificial light. These two here, what you're still showing, are with natural light. But once you're gonna move farther, because I'm three slight This is natural light as well, but next slide, here you've got artificial light. So in my opinion, it doesn't look fake, right? So what you also can use is a speed light. And I can, sh I can show you right here. This is the speed light I'm using, and I'm using this speed light six, seven years. This is the thing I said, if you're gonna uh, invest in a really high quality equipment it's gonna last with you longer than cheap of course mm, okay so backlight as i said my absolutely favorite light works amazing with artificial lightning and this is the next light and the highlights and texture you can show is stunning it's absolutely beautiful and you can see that drinks and liquidy food looks beautiful it's just i don't know it's just beautiful <laughs> sorry i really love this light and and uh, it's, it pop the texture and uh, it's, it's really it's really nice i really love this yellow drink and this is again soy sauce it's not whiskey or bourbon <laughs> so go for it Ex uh, experiment And don't be, be confident what you're doing and just try. If you prefer working with natural light, work with natural light. If you feel more comfortable with artificial light, go with artificial light. Why I love artificial light as well? Because I can work actually every time I need, whatever I want. Okay, it's like sometimes it's like 8 p.m. 
and something came to my mind, okay, so I'm gonna shoot now. So with natural light, you can't do this, you can work. And in the summertime, it's perfect. Okay, you have long days, but in a, in a winter and autumn time, days are shorter. And if you don't work full time as a food photographer, and this is your, let's say, second job, you work full time at work, and you're coming back home, it's dark already. So you need artificial light if you want to capture the photo after like four or five o'clock, right? But what is also most important, more, very important in uh, food photography is playing with bounce cards and diffusers. Because if you want to increase the, uh, the shadows, you should use the black bounce cards. And you don't have to buy them. Again, you can make them. Like I'm going to show you. This is just the simple black cardboard I'm using this way, I'm using this way, I'm using this way. And you can play with cardboards like this and you don't have to buy as well the white one, the same. It's just the white cardboard bought in a paper store and you can use it. I do have as well the, the one I bought. So this is the very common on Amazon. You have silver, which reflects highlights a lot, white and black. And then I have another one, black, like this. And this one has three walls. You can go around the subject, but you can easily do the same with cardboards. Seriously, in the beginning, don't invest in this kind of thing. Invest in props, invest in backgrounds. But this you can make by yourself. Okay, so composition. Here we go. Creating and composition is also very important. And you can play with shadow, uh, shade, uh, sorry, not shade, shapes. <laughs> and, but also you can use some very basic compositions. And I'm gonna speak about just few. So rule of third, the most common one. You can go to next slide, will be easier. It's really simple. You can see right here that once you're gonna broke the photo into nine equal squares, you can see that on the like I don't know why I didn't put I I'm, I hope you um, you know the rule of third, and imagine those lines horizontally and vertically, and when they they cross, this is the rule of third. Doesn't matter if it's gonna be which which cross it will be. This is the rule of third. You can play with this. You can see that on the left hand side, the cross is on the left. In the middle, you can see that this is top left cross. And on the photo on the right hand side is the right bottom cross. So it doesn't matter where is the hero. The, the key is, it's going to be on the cross once you're going to drive, uh, drive, draw this line. Another really uh, popular and not so hard composition is the rule of odd. So it's very uh, simple and you can start immediately, that will start to showing the frame in a very easy uh, composition. The rule of odd says that were you including a group of subjects, yes, in the, in the photo, the odd number will produce more interesting composition. But also remember that whenever you're gonna use it, the hero should be supporting with, with the other subject. So as you can see here, the hero is the middle tart with strawberries and the other round doesn't even have to be full. They can be cut it like the, the drinks on the right. You, right. you can see that the hero is the full glass, but the top and the bottom are cut it. They are cropped. And you don't have to see them, but this is still a rule of odds. On the next slide, you can see the same. The rule of odds doesn't mean that have to be three subjects, can be more. The left, you can have, you have seven. And the hero is, you can easily say that the hero is the, the strawberry gelate in the middle. And the same with this bowl of, this is the rice with the fried egg. Right now, I forgot the name of this dish. And on the right, you can you can see the the see the right uh, the jello, and it's with backlight and natural light in this photo. 
So even if I left the little part of the frame from the window, you can see the white above the jello shot, the jello desserts, doesn't bother the eye, looks, looks good. Uh, abo on the top of the photo, the white line, yeah, this is the frame of the window and it still looks good. Doesn't bother the eye for the whole composition, right? So as I said, experiment, experiment, experiment. Another, my personal favorite composition is the uh, negative space. And I think you can find very, very often on my photos as well, because in general, my photos are very simple and I'm learning big scenes and I'm still learning small details like around the hero, but these three photos are very simple and you can see the, the negative space and this negative space helps to improve the, the, the view of the hero, which is a drink, which is a brownie with ice cream and the hot chocolate with small little ginger mom inside. Photo editing, I'm gonna do, go with this uh, pretty fast. So the most important thing is to capture in raw raw file format. Why? Because in raw file format, you can do everything during the post-production, absolutely everything. Don't be surprised if you are just a beginner because the photos you're gonna see in Lightroom or Photoshop, they're gonna look ugly in the beginning because they're gonna be dark, they're gonna be muted, they're gonna be like out of saturation, out, out of light. And, but that's why we have to work with Lightroom and post-production. I personally work with Lightroom and sometimes with Photoshop. Never used one, the other program, Capture One, thank you. <laughs> uh, so uh, never, I never work with Capture One. So can't say anything about that, but about Lightroom, I can, I can say that it's really easy program, I would say, to, to work with. With raw photos, you can focus on details. You can highlight the hero and you can make darker um, the other areas on, the, uh, on your photo. And what is really important, what I said in the very, very beginning, that the, the foot, because this is your hero, should be bright because this will, will focus your attention. The, 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 the focus should be on foot. So everything around shouldn't be bright. Uh, at the first look. I think, I'm not, I don't know if you want me to speak about all the sliders and everything in Lightroom. What is, what is really important is, what is really important is adjustment brush. Because with adjustment brush, actually, you can mark what you need to highlight or to make it darker. Excuse me. So as you can see here, imagine that you're going to use adjustment brush only on the soup, on the red soup, and highlight it more, go up with saturation or with lights, and everything else around will stay darker. So looks better, right? And my personal advice is to, with dark and moody food photography, it's really good touch in the end to put, add a little bit of vignette because increase the shadows and draw the eye straight to the foot. Everything around again is a little bit darker, not too much, just you need to, you, like with everything, you need to know where is the line. And also the rustic and muted accessories and vibrant and contrasting font styling, but also specific manipulation of light and shadow can always help to achieve the perfect dramatic photograph. So you can see here the rustic, again, my tin, my favorite tin is, is still here. <laughs> so I'm using very often with drinks, increase the dramatic mood. The same, the middle photo, which is old metal plate, looks really interesting, in my opinion, this styling with this like fresh tangerines and put on the rustic metal plate. So just play, play with colors, play with whatever feel to do, and just don't be, don't be shy 
and just remember that there is no strict rules. As I said, be creative, be spontaneous, and find your own style. And don't be upset if it's not going to show in Black Month. You see that two years after, and I'm still learning, and I, I still need uh, lessons, and I still attend to some YouTube and life. I'm still r reading, and there's so many amazing food photographers. And just remember that all of us, one day, we all were the beginners. So go for it. Just go for it and enjoy. Remember that this should bring you joy and smile in the end of the day. And if you don't feel it, take a break and come back next day. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> wow. That is one of the most complete presentations I have ever heard because oh. you, you cover all of the aspects of uh, food photography in one presentation. Wow, and I really enjoy all of the picture. It was it's Thank so you. amazing. I don't know why you didn't have you didn't have the two of the photos. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know that soy sauce can be that beautiful. What kind of sauce is that? Um, soy it's sauce just the it's so just the black, right? Yeah, it's just the, the regular soy sauce. Soy sauce. It's just you need to add a little bit, a little bit, and just play with colors and wait once you're gonna achieve the color you want. If it's too dark, you can add some water, right? So if it's too oh. light, add more soy sauce and just with water, of course. It's like a oh. like a juice. I see. So you add with water. Wow. So yes, so yes, yes, yes. With water. With water. Okay, so now uh, maybe I I cannot resume all of this inspiration, but I maybe I want to highlight some. But uh, if you guys have just started uh, food photography, I suggest you uh, revisit the record once again because uh, it will really, it's very practical. What uh, Nene all said is very practical, and you can also practice it in your house. And then yeah. The first one you must have tripod. Tripod is uh, is a must for uh, food photography. And then, yeah, and then you can also uh, use the dark props if you want to uh, do the dark food photography and also a dark background. And <laughs> what amazed me is the Vaseline one because I have I haven't yeah. used that. Uh, can you show us once again? Then? Yes, of course. And I'm going to show you as well. Give me one second. I'm just going to grab a cutlery and I'm going to show you how it will be before yeah, 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 and after. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Uh, because, wow, it's very amazing. I haven't ever uh, tried that. I don't know that uh, the Vaseline can, uh, can make the cutlery yeah. come. And this is the lesson yeah. learned from some other life. I saw someone, I don't, really don't remember who said that. And I said, seriously, let me try. And it works, it works. So, okay, so here is shiny. You can see it's shiny, right? Okay. So now I just took a little bit of Vaseline and I'm going to put on the, not too much. It's, as I said, with everything you need to do and don't put this into food, right? <laughs> wow! Okay. See? Oh my God! Oh it's not God. that shiny wow. anymore. Here you've got shiny. You see how shiny it is. Not shiny. Wow! Wow! I will definitely add that one. Um, yeah. To my um back. Wow. You're welcome. <laughs> Wow, that's mind blowing. Okay, <laughs> doesn't work. Doesn't work pretty uh, well with plates. Uh, I've tried, not really with cutlery. Yeah, but with plate, it's really hard to get rid of the reflection uh, with Vaseline. But I remember for sure. You know the Joanny from the buy shot. She said about there is some spray. Uh, you can. Spray the plate. Of course, once you're going to put the food on it, don't eat the food. Because I, I, I've asked her about that. Uh, there is some matte spray you can spray on and you can wash it later on. 
but you can't eat it because then it's it's not uh, not healthy. I mean, it's not safe for us to eat after. Um, so yeah, probably if you're gonna eat something with Vaseline, you're not gonna die because we put the Vaseline on lips, right? So it should be fine. But uh, my but but. Uh, um, but with plates, uh, I would uh, say to be very delicate. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. That's so inspiring. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to show you once again the Vaseline. Ah, okay. Make sure you guys screen grab it. Wow. Okay. The more you are into the food photography, the more you will look like a magician. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you bring like some weird stuff. Uh, the the weird uh, the the weirder the the tools you bring to the photo shoot, the more professional you look like. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, we'll um, maybe we have like only five to ten minutes left for the question and answer. So I'll just um. I uh, see the questions here. Um, yeah, there's a question about the lighting. So uh, you have already explained that you use Godox for uh, artificial lighting and you use like artificial lighting for like 80 to 90% of your shoot. Mm -hmm. um, but is that lighting a splash or continuous lighting? I have two. I have uh, Godox is uh, continuous. And as I said, this is speed light. So it's flash. Ah. So speed light I use only for action shots. Uh, for uh, like my splashes or dripping uh, or steering, everything what is with, in, with action, I use the speed light. But for all the rest, I use the Godox. Ah, I see. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, how many lighting you use for most of your picture? One. <laughs> wow. Just one. Just one and this reflecting uh, cards. Uh, once for, um, I was shooting for a client and uh, we wanted to highlight, like she wants the food really bright. So then I used uh, my Godox and the old um, lightning I had from Amazon, this cheap one, but works fine. For, for this purpose as a second light. But at this moment, I have only only one. Uh, I think once, only once I was shooting with speed light and Godox. And I know that I wanna try it um, for, um, for action shots. I saw really nice videos and I need to try it, but at the moment I'm pretty busy to play with my own food, uh, clients, clients, clients. It's a lot of work for me in September. Uh, so yeah, ninety nine percent is just one light. Ah, I see. Is that the light you use uh, in your bag? Yeah, this is the yeah, this is the the Godox. Ah, I see. Wow, amazing. So, um, basically, you are in your studio right now. Uh, my studio is my home. <laughs> wow. So this is like uh, my living room, kitchen, living room, and uh, like my corner where I have a shelf of my props, my, my desk. And this is very, very um, handy because like here when I tether, uh, this is what I forgot to mention, tethering with cable. Uh, so you tether, connect camera with, uh, with, the, mm -hmm. with your computer and you, uh, you can see uh, the uh, actual view. Um, so um, what I want to say, ah, that the, is handy to have here desk and there is a, my table and there is a kitchen. So it's, everything is very close because uh, when we uh, lived in some other place last year, uh, like my studio was on the first floor and the kitchen was downstairs. So for me going up and down all the time uh, was, uh, was really exhausting. So here right now is perfect. Everything is very, everything is, you know, just two meters from me. <laughs> wow. Okay, so we have a question about the type of lighting. Can you repeat once again the type of lighting you use? Tripod? 
uh, uh, lighting, the type of lighting, the type of like Godox it. lighting you use. Yeah, this is SL60W. Ah. SL60W. This is uh, like the, yeah. 60 w Yeah, this is the one I have. Wow. Okay, so, um, yeah, basically the food photography thing is maybe, I can say that recession or recession proof. Oh, crisis proof because you can work in your home. Wow. Yeah, I miss <laughs> people a little bit. You know, everything has pros and cons, yeah? So, like, the positive thing is that I can work basically 24 hours if I will have to. Uh, of course, I don't, but if I have to, because my studio is here and with artificial light, I can work whenever I want to. And I have to say that sometimes I had like last minute uh, sessions and I don't know, some like I work from one agency and they uh, just like emailed me that can I create the photos and they gave me like three days uh, to create this. So I said, yes, of course, I can do this. I have uh, a little bit of time so, because I want to still work with them. So sometimes you have to sacrifice and work 12 hours and uh, after dinner as well. Uh, but if you love it, as I love it, and if, it, if I'm tired, in the end of the day, I sit down on a couch with a glass of wine. And I said, yes, that was a good day. <laughs> wow. Okay. So... I think uh, our time is already up. So, wow, I have to thank you so much for uh, many inspiration for today. Uh, thank you. Anna. Wow, thank you. it's very amazing. We are very lucky to have you tonight. <laughs> I'm very lucky that you invited me. And it was my first life, as I said. So, like, um, I'm ready for next now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, so we are really enjoy the live and yup, we already over um yeah more than one hour and yeah. it's pretty fast. Wow. So uh, we have to thank you so much for the live session and then I hope maybe in the future we can yeah collaborate again together. Wow. I'm so excited. Then okay, I'll see you again uh maybe in the next uh uh, session maybe in the future so thank you so much thank Bye. you uh, thank you thank you guys for joining thank you wow so um yeah okay guys you can type thank you anna also wow okay we are so blessed to have anna tonight oh wow okay so i'll end the session i'll see you again thank bye you.